The Bosiris Erie 1850B electric mining shovel known as Big Brutus stands today in the prairie of southeast Kansas, a towering monument to an era when coal was king and the machines built to extract it grew to almost unimaginable proportions. At 16 stories tall and weighing 11 million pounds, this colossal piece of equipment represents the second largest electric shovel ever built. But what makes Big Brutus truly remarkable isn't just its size, it's the fact that it survived at all. While nearly every other giant mining shovel from this golden age of surface mining met its end at the cutting torch, reduced to scrap metal and hauled away, Big Brutus escaped that fate through a combination of timing, community determination, and what can only be described as good fortune. The story begins in the coal fields of southeast Kansas, where the Pittsburgh and Midway Coal Mining Company operated extensive surface mining operations throughout the mid-20th century. By the early 1960s, the firm needed a machine capable of removing the increasingly thick overburden covering the coal seams in their Kansas operations. Busiris Erie, headquartered in South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, had established itself as one of the premier manufacturers of heavy mining equipment in the world. The company's roots stretched back to 1880, and by the 1960s, they'd built some of the largest earth-moving machines ever conceived. When Pittsburgh and Midway came calling, Busiris Erie responded with a design that would push the boundaries of what a mining shovel could accomplish. Construction of the 1850B began in 1962. The machine was assembled on site near the town of West Mineral, Kansas, a process that took approximately 11 months to complete. When the shovel finally came to life in 1963, it stood 160 feet tall, stretched 150 feet in length and featured a boom extending 150 feet outward from the main housing. The bucket alone measured roughly 11 feet wide, 20 feet long and 9 feet high, capable of scooping up to 150 tons of earth in a single pass. Powering this mechanical behemoth required enormous amounts of electricity. Big Brutus drew its energy through a trailing cable connected to a dedicated substation, consuming enough power to supply a town of 15,000 people. The machine walked on massive crawler tracks, each shoe measuring over seven feet long and more than four feet wide. For the next 11 years, Big Brutus worked the coal seams of Cherokee County, Kansas, performing a single but essential task, removing the overburden that lay between the surface and the valuable coal deposits below. The shovel would take its enormous bite of earth swing the boom to the side, and dump the material in great mounds called spoil piles. Following behind, smaller equipment and crews would extract the exposed coal and load it for transport. The numbers from this period tell the story of the machine's productivity. During its operational life, Big Brutus moved an estimated 9 million cubic yards of earth annually. The shovel worked around the clock when conditions permitted, operated by rotating crews who climbed into the operator's cab, positioned high in the machinery house. Despite its impressive output, Big Brutus wasn't without its challenges. The machine's sheer size meant that moving from one mining site to another was a slow and deliberate process, with the shovel traveling at a top speed of roughly 0.2 miles per hour. Its massive electrical appetite also made operations costly, and the equipment required constant maintenance to keep running. By the mid-1970s, the economics of coal mining in southeast Kansas had shifted dramatically. The easily accessible coal seams were becoming depleted, and what remained lay beneath increasingly thick layers of overburden. The energy crisis of 1973 had sent fuel prices soaring, and while this initially increased demand for coal, it also drove up operational costs across the mining industry. Pittsburgh and Midway made the decision to retire Big Brutus in 1974. The shovel had served well, but its time had passed. For most giant mining shovels, this moment marked the beginning of the end. The standard practice throughout the industry was straightforward and unsentimental. When a machine reached the end of its useful life, crews would cut it apart with torches and sell the metal for scrap. This fate had already claimed countless massive shovels across the American coal regions. 
It would later claim even larger machines, including the famous Big Muskie in Ohio, the largest single bucket digging machine ever built. That 13,000 ton behemoth was dismantled in 1999, its bucket the only piece preserved. The mountaineer in West Virginia met a similar end. Silver spade, gem of Egypt, and dozens of other giant shovels that had reshaped the landscape of the American coal industry all eventually fell to the scrapper's torch. What happened next in Kansas would prove exceptional. Rather than immediately scrapping the retired shovel, Pittsburgh and Midway allowed it to sit idle while the mining operation wound down. During this period, local residents and officials in Cherokee County began considering an alternative. The communities of southeast Kansas had been shaped by coal mining for generations. The industry had brought jobs, built towns, and defined the regional economy for nearly a century. As mining declined, there was a growing awareness that something important was being lost, not just economically, but historically. A movement emerged to preserve Big Brutus as a monument to the mining heritage of the region. The idea faced significant obstacles. The machine sat on private property, its future ultimately controlled by the mining firm. Preservation would require not just acquisition of the shovel itself, but development of the surrounding land, ongoing maintenance, and a sustainable funding model. In 1983, Pittsburgh and Midway donated the shovel and a small parcel of surrounding land to a newly formed non-profit organization. This gift represented an extraordinary act of corporate generosity, sparing the equipment from a fate that had claimed virtually every comparable machine in the country. The donation also reflected a practical reality. Scrapping such an enormous piece of equipment would itself be costly and complicated. Transforming a retired mining shovel into a functioning museum attraction required years of effort. Volunteers from the surrounding communities contributed countless hours to cleaning up the site, making the equipment safe for visitors and developing the interpretive materials that would help people understand what they were seeing. The Big Brutus Museum officially opened to the public in 1985. Visitors could now climb into the massive machine, explore the operator's cab, and walk through the machinery house where the electrical systems and winches that powered the boom were located. Standing at the base of the shovel, looking up at the bucket suspended overhead, people could finally grasp the scale of the equipment that had once worked these lands. Over the following decades, the museum expanded significantly Additional buildings were constructed to house exhibits on regional mining history, displaying smaller equipment, historical photographs, and artifacts from the communities that coal built. A gift shop, event facilities, and improved visitor amenities gradually transformed what had been an abandoned mine site into a proper heritage attraction. Today, Big Brutus draws tens of thousands of visitors annually to a corner of Kansas that might otherwise see few tourists. The museum has become an important economic driver for Cherokee County, supporting local businesses and providing a source of community pride. But the significance of Big Brutus extends beyond its regional impact. The shovel stands as one of the only surviving examples of the giant electric mining shovels that transformed American industry during the 20th century. When historians or engineers want to understand how these machines were built and operated, Big Brutus offers something that photographs and blueprints can't. The real thing, preserved in three dimensions and available for close inspection. The preservation of Big Brutus also raises interesting questions about what we choose to save and why. It also represents human ingenuity, industrial achievement, and the labor of thousands of incredible workers who earned their livings in the coal fields. And Big Brutus was their greatest ally. Among all the giant mining shovels built during the 20th century, Big Brutus remains one of only a handful that escaped destruction. The machine owes its survival to a combination of factors. A mining company willing to donate rather than scrap, a community that recognized the historical value of what it had and the organizational effort required to establish and maintain a museum. Had any of these elements been missing, Big Brutus would likely have shared the fate of the Mountaineer, Big Muskie and dozens of other industrial giants that exist now only in photographs and memories. Instead, 
The shovel stands today where it last worked, a 16-story reminder of an age when we built machines almost beyond imagining to extract the resources that powered a nation. For those who make the journey to West Mineral, Kansas, Big Brutus offers something rare, a chance to stand in the presence of industrial history, preserved against all odds and open to anyone willing to look up.